Hi everybody, Simon Jones here from HitFilm.com. If you haven't already heard, HitFilm 3 Pro is nearly here. It has crazy huge, insane new features. This weekend is your last chance to pre-order, so follow the link in the description to head over to our blog for full details. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the upgrades to the particle simulator. That's right, one of HitFilm's best features is now even better in HitFilm 3. If you've used HitFilm 1 or HitFilm 2, you'll see some real differences here. Okay, so I've got this Sparks Particle effect. So, for starters, I'm adding effects directly to the Particle Simulator layer. That's something you couldn't do in previous versions, so that really helps with your overall workflow. I'm adding three glows here, because that always looks better, I think, because you can control the overall glow effect. So you have something that's really close, and then you have more and more diffuse glows as you kind of get further away from whatever the object is. Uh, you get far better results than if you just use one glow, for example. Okay, so here's one of the new effects in HitFilm 3 Pro, which is called Color Vibrance. And if you're looking to create intense visuals, kind of like uh, you would get off something hot, like sparks or molten lava or sun or that kind of thing, uh, it's perfect. It, it look, makes everything look great and it retains a lot of luminance detail. It doesn't blow things out in the same way that using some of the other tinting controls might do. Okay, so uh, I've added a grade layer and I'm going to play around with some lighting effects. We've got this anamorphic effect here, just getting a bit of streaks coming off the glowing embers. And I'll also add on lens dirt because I always do. Uh, I just think it looks nice. Uh, but also just to show that you can add on these effects and it's all just responding completely in real time again. So Cine Star is on there to uh, give it a particular look. I'll take off those letterboxing because we don't need them. So in the camera here, I'm going to turn on depth of field and we'll just ramp up the settings so that it's really intense and obvious what's going on. And again, you can see that it's just responding as you expect. You can control all of the camera lens properties and adjust them without having to wait for a full re-render. So toggling depth field on and off here, and you can see the effects immediately. This is something that would have taken a long time in HitFilm 2, but HitFilm 3, the intelligent caching means that it only spends resources doing what it absolutely needs to do. Because it's already worked out the positions of all those particles, it doesn't have to do that again. It's just applying the post-processing effects, the 2D effects, on top of that. What this means is that you can experiment more. You can iterate and try different things, turning stuff on and off, seeing what looks best, and it doesn't take a long time to do that. You don't have to wait for frames to re-render. You can uh, have a lot more flexibility in your workflow. And uh, ultimately that means that your shots will look better because you can finesse them more without having to worry about, oh, do I actually have the time to sit here and wait for this entire frame to re-render all over again? Instead, you can just get in there and play around with all the settings and uh, find the look that you want. It's, uh, it's a far more intuitive, far more satisfying way to work. I'm now going to shift gears and show you an example of the new 3D object textures at work. This is a hugely exciting development and kind of changes the prospect of everything you can do with the particle simulator. So let's dive right in. So I've created a new composite shot. You can see here I've got a bunch of buildings from Video Copilot's Metropolitan Pack. And what I'm going to do is bring in these 3D buildings and arrange them in this 3D space to create a city block. So I've got my first building here and I'm uh, now going to bring in each subsequent building and you can see that I'm putting it onto the same 3D layer. So I'm not putting these onto the timeline as different layers, they're all going into the single 3D model layer. That means that when I use it as a texture for the particle system, it will just take all of these models as one texture. You can go to as much detail as you want for this process. I'm just doing a really quick and simple setup here, so I'm just bringing in a variety of different shaped buildings and positioning them roughly so that it looks kind of like a natural city block. You could of course go to much more detail, you could bring in many more different types of buildings, you could bring in additional details, you could put a road in if you wanted even. You know, there's a lot of detail you can go to here if you want to and if your shot demands it. So I'm just going to move all these so that they all sit in the same position on the Y axis, otherwise we're going to have some peculiar floating buildings. I'll just skip ahead until we have finished this process. Okay, so we have our arranged city block with our collection of buildings. And uh, we're now ready to plug this in to the particle simulator. So you can see here, we have this city block, kind of representative of a, a classic American city. That's the idea, at least. We're now going to bring in the particle simulator, drop it onto the timeline, 
And you can see that we've got our standard particles coming out looking as normal. We'll turn off our city 3D layer. And now we'll go into the particle system's appearance properties, change to layer and select the 3D models. You can see we now have that city block generated as multiple particles. Right now they're all generating on top of each other in a little cluster, so it doesn't really work. We'll make them a bit smaller so they're not quite so huge. And then we're going to change the emitter to a quad emitter. This is a flat rectangle, which is perfect for this particular kind of effect. You can see I've rotated it around by 90 degrees, so it's flat to the floor. And we can now adjust its size to disperse out our particles. And as we do this, you go from this kind of weird cluster of buildings to something that starts to resemble a city. And this fundamentally is, is the kind of core concept for creating these cityscape shots. And you can go into a much more detail. You can create multiple particle systems with different 3D model setups. Um, you could even use the new layer emitter properties to create a very specific layout for your buildings. There's a lot of control in here, but even if you just do it through this simple method, you can still get really beautiful and convincing results. And of course, you still get all the full lighting with shadow casting and everything else that you'd expect. Uh, we will, of course, after release, have a full tutorial on creating this kind of stuff. This for now is just a really quick preview of what you can expect to be doing in HitFilm 3 Pro. Finally, here's a cool test render from one of our beta testers known as NullUnit over on the forum. This neatly demonstrates HitFilm 3 Pro's new unified 3D space in which 3D objects and particles can happily coexist. Note how the ship and its engine trails are rendered correctly without the need for any masking or compositing tricks. You just put them in the right place and it works. You can find out much more over on the blog where we've got full details about HitFilm 3 Pro. Like I mentioned at the start, this weekend is the last chance to pre-order with special upgrade discounts. Head over to the blog for full details. HitFilm 3 Pro drops next week and it is going to be huge. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.